David, uh, talk us through this. Yeah, this. What are we? What are we doing? Yeah, um, the dilemma with electric fencing is how do you use it for other things than just uh, controlling where cattle go? And in a way, that's what this is. But um, we we wanted to establish some groups of trees in here. Um, you know, there's not many trees in this country, and uh, we wanted to uh, kickstart a bit of succession going on. So we've just put a hot tape around these trees. They've been here for about six years, I think. Um, so there's been no stock in here for six years. It's interesting to see what's going on because it's had a full season of growth on it for six seasons and it's all melted back. And this is what uh, we've got growth going on here again now. Uh, although it's been a very dry season, you can see there's, there's green, there's a lot of green here. But there's, um, I'm just interested to show you what's going on at the soil surface. So you've got this quite a deep thatch of wet material because we just had 16 mils of rain the other day, very fortunately. And you've got all this root material, but it's so friable, it's just absolutely full of life. And it's just wonderful. And it smells like a compost heap. So if you do this, if you keep leaving this the way it is, it actually doesn't improve a lot more. It needs disturbance from grazing, and we've just kept cattle out of here till the trees are big enough um, that they won't, the cattle won't destroy them. Um, but it, you do get a big build-up of organic matter at the surface, which is, is beautiful. It just shows what what can happen to country if you let it have time to. Um, I suppose what you'd call it is it's investing in its own future. So, um, and that's all free, you know, it's just planning time for that to happen. Uh, you don't have to do it for six years like we have here with this particular situation with the trees, but uh, providing adequate time for the plant community to recover from grazing uh, creates a similar result, but not quite as good. But then you're, you're having some production while you're getting that not quite as good result. So, um, yeah, it's just interesting to see uh, you don't get a lot of, we haven't had a lot of, uh, there's some perennials in here, but it's still mainly annuals. Um, and David, what, prior to the six years, was this being grazed like the rest of yeah. it? And then before that it would have been cropped? Like what's yeah. the, yeah. you know, yeah. that's beautiful, friable soil. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a, I'd imagine it's a, um, very different to what it was when you pulled the, pulled the plough out for the last time and the, yeah. the header. Yes. Yeah, I remember uh, back in about 1972, I think we bought a, a little second-hand Massey Ferguson tractor and a brand new plough, disc plough, and I felt very proud ploughing up around the side of that hill. I felt like I was really farming. <laughs> no, you must have been only 10 or 15 no then, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, you know, uh, then you find out a few things over the years. That uh, One of the things I did discover by doing a little bit of research was that when you have a full breakout disturbance of a paddock with any sort of machine but particularly discs uh, discs and a full breakout you you destroy 85 percent of the macropores in the soil now that's comp complicated language but what it means is all the little holes that animals and plants make in the soil that allow it to accept moisture mm. you destroy 85 percent of them the second you fully disturb it which is you know, that's really not what you want. So along comes, um, you know, zero tillage farming, which seemed like, a, seemed like it was really an answer to our, our problems with agriculture of having too much bare soil exposed for too long. But, you know, you realise after a while that it's absolutely and utterly only possible because of herbicides. And herbicides, whilst they're effective um, th for the long term, in the history of the world, they're probably going to be a, a short-lived thing because the plants have evolved here millions of years ago and they they just keep on evolving and they'll get around these things. We've already got resistance going on everywhere. And we also know now that that uh, glyphosate's not the benign product that we thought it was. It has a, some pretty devastating... Well, we, were, we were told it was. We were told, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've, yeah and being told. There's some, um, yeah, some very disturbing uh, things that happen in the soil through the action of glyphosate with living things in the soil that mean that it's right through the food chain now. Mm. So yeah, that's very disturbing. Uh, so we basically what we need is, it's tricky with cropping,
because it is, it's tended to be a monoculture the way we've done it for a long time. But we really need a way of cropping that's multi-species and we don't know how to harvest that yet. And in an area like Australia, we've got big areas. We haven't learned how to do that, but it's something we need to learn. Mm. Um, any other comments here, David? <coughs> um, while we're getting wet knees? No, I think we're right, Charlie. Uh, but it is, uh, it is fascinating to me that when we plan this grass that's ahead of us, um, how in the incredibly dry conditions that we've had, there's still green. There are still green plants. This is a. I'm not saying it's like. It's, it's not like this on the rest of the place. This is an unusual situation because we've got a lot of organic matter at the soil surface, hasn't had any grazing for six years, and it's even when it's really dry, if you open it up here, there's moisture at the surface. So, um, but on the rest of the place, we've got uh, the spring growth, which is hayed off. Uh, we haven't had stock on most of it for a long period of time, and there are still green plants there, even though it's been very dry. That's amazing to me. And as you can look across where those cow the cows came out five days ago, David, yep. or so, and there's a good green fuzz there. Yeah, that'd be that'd be a fortnight. A fortnight. A fortnight, fortnight since they were in this paddock beside us. Yeah. yeah but yeah, right. you're right. It's there's quite a bit of recovery going on. And the weather's been pretty cold. I mean, we're yeah. in Burra in June. Yeah. It's not known for its no. It's balmy weather. No, I year. mean it will. We will get growth to the end of June mm. in some years. Mm. But uh, yeah, we had a frost this morning, so it's going to get cool from now on till the middle of August. About. Mm. So um, yeah, if if you've sort of haven't got any grass on your country now, you won't be expecting too much until spring. Mm. Um, what next, David? I don't know, Charlie. We're going to have lunch. <laughs>